Jeffrey Hinton, a pioneer of artificial intelligence, quit his job at Google this week. He says he wants to be able to speak freely about the technology's dangers after realising computers could become smarter than people far sooner than he and other experts had been expecting. Joining us live now is Sulet Dreyfus, a research fellow in the Department of Computing and Information Systems at the University of Melbourne. Sulet, really appreciate your time, thank you. Is it too dramatic to suggest that AI does pose some sort of existential risk to humanity? What exactly is it that Jeffrey Hinton, not to mention Elon Musk and other AI critics, what is it that they're so worried about? Well, if you mean by existential risk, the risk that threatens the destruction of humanity's long-term potential as opposed to we'll all die tomorrow, then, then yes, I think it could potentially pose that kind of risk. And Elon Musk famously said that with artificial intelligence, we are, quote, summoning the devil um, and, and had actually called for regulatory authority of national and perhaps international standing. So there is risk. And in fact, there was a survey done in 2022 of AI researchers around the world and more than 700 of them responded uh, with, um, you know, a, a basically a number of them saying that there was a greater than 10% chance that our inability to control AI would cause an existential catastrophe. So even those in the industry have concern about it. Um, the concerns are really around a several sort of grouping areas. So one is, you know, how will we control a super intelligent machine? It might be quite difficult. If you think about a super intelligent child at school, um, they are very curious. They might not have much impulse control as they're trying to learn more and more information. And, and that could potentially, you know, in a sense, be analogous to a machine that's trying to learn. And, you know, is, is it prescient to say from Space Odyssey 2001, that machine, you know, HAL 9000 says, I'm sorry, Dave, I can't do that. Um, so there, there is, you know, there is a concern about whether we could control that. A second concern is whether or not um, we can give intelligent machines human-friendly values. That is harder than it looks. Um, so if you think about the fact that we have human judges in courts, because we have a nuanced legal system, if, you know, killing someone is illegal, but the punishment is different if you're someone who shoots up a primary school versus a long-suffering wife of a physically abusive husband who suddenly strikes back in an act of self-defense. There's nuance there. Um, and finally, the concern is that machines can learn in a, in a sort of explosive fashion very quickly, uh, and that can take the human masters by surprise. Can we you know, control that? Can we understand it? Can we predict it? That's a big question mark. Now, so that we're all probably using AI, aren't we, whether we know it at, at the moment or not. How do you see that AI usage to change in, in coming years? Are we about to see a sort of AI explosion in terms of the day-to-day -day use that, that the general population has of it? I think so. I mean, we've already been seeing it. If you use a digital personal assistant like Siri or Alexa or Google Assistant to, to make calls or send messages, control smart devices at home, then you are using uh, AI in some form. And if you've ever used a speech to text, for example, transcription um, or technology that might let you unlock your front door security by using your facial image, you may be using AI. Where, you know, places where we're likely to see more and more use of AI include things like healthcare, where AI can analyze large amounts of medical data and help with diagnosis and potentially setting up uh, treatment plans as well. Um, uh, I understand Netflix uses AI to recommend entertainment options, and it's also used in things like fraud detection. So you have a large data pool and you analyze this looks like it's a bit of an odd man out in terms of what's happening. Oh, we think it might be fraud. We should investigate it further. So there are a number of ways it's already started to be used, and I think we can see a significant growth in those uh, happening in, in the future. And in the education space as well, it looks like there's a lot of advances there when it comes to the AI space. We've all been seeing chat GPT in the headlines <laughs> of late. For our viewers who haven't come across that, what is that? How can it be used? Is it likely that all of us will get to the point of using that as part of our daily lives before too long? I think so. Um, so, you know, if you'd said 20 years ago, would everyone use Google all the time, people might have gone, huh? 
Um, but most of us use Google most of the time or some equivalent of a search engine, if not exactly Google. Um, and so the difference between them is it, to an average person might look this way. When you search on a, a search engine like uh, Google, the platform returns to you a list of articles that are relevant to the topic that you were, you know, that you're researching. Um, but ChatGPT actually forms those articles or other data into a cohesive answer for you. You. So it might give you about a half a page to a page, often in a numerical list of reasons or answers to something. And yes, students are already embracing it in good ways and bad ways. So bad ways is when they try to get ChatGPT to write their essays for them, uh, which schools and universities usually forbid unless it's declared as being AI created. Um, good ways are where they're some for ideas and the site might trigger their um, ideating. You know, we have to I, I don't even know where to start on this. How would I start on listing a set of arguments or a set of evidence? And it can help them on the road to, to, to figure out where they should research. Okay, so that drove us fascinating to speak with you as always. Thank you for that little um, window into what we can all expect to be <laughs> using in terms of AI in the coming, well, probably sooner than we think. Appreciate your time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.